Hi, I'm Paul Seal from Coachad at Code UK. Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to get started with Umbraco 9 Release Candidate 2. Um, in this video, what we're going to do is going to install Umbraco 9. You're going to learn how you install it and uh, how you get it running so you can see the back office. Uh, so let's get started then. So what we're going to do is follow along with this uh, documentation page here, which shows you how to get started. Um, I'm guessing the fact that you're watching this video means that you prefer to have an example in video form. So that's why I'm doing this video for you. Um, so first thing you need to do is install the .NET 5 SDK. So you can do that by get, clicking on the link and then clicking on the, the relevant one for what you're wanting to install. So I, I installed that one. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure decide on how you're going to store the data whether you want to use sql server so you may have sql express installed on your machine or you might want to use sql azure um, so you may have created a database already so you just need to have those connection strings to hand or you might want to use sql compact edition which i think only runs on windows at the moment <clears throat> so um, that's just something to bear in mind before we carry on next thing um, what we're doing here is we're installing the Umbraco templates and it's got this versioning after it as well, just to say that it's the release candidate version two. So, and where you do this is in the command line. So what we need to do is open up, a, um, I, I like to open up the folder and go where I'm going to put my code. And then in here, I create a folder I'll do new folder <clears throat> and I'm going to say testing RC2. I go into that folder and then what I like to do is I just like to type in CMD and enter and that opens the command line here. Right now we're in here. What we want to do is follow along with the blog post. So I'm going to copy that. So it's going to install the templates. So even if I've already had them installed, I always end up doing this every time anyway, just to update it. And if you look at the post, it says whether you're installing them for the first time, the templates, or you are updating them, it's the exact same command to do that. So this is um, going to install the Umbraco templates for the release candidate too. And now that allows us then to use .NET new Umbraco. So if we scroll down here, we can then do .NET new Umbraco, my custom Umbraco project. So again, I'm in this folder of testing RC2. I'm going to do .NET new Umbraco. Um, I think it's lowercase Umbraco. I'm not sure if that is necessary or not, the lowercase. Also, once you've installed these templates, you should be able to use Visual Studio for this, but um, I quite like the command line interface for this, so I'm just showing you this. You might see other people use Visual Studio for it, but feel free to have a look and do file new project and see if that template is in there. So .NET new on Braco, and then I want to do slash n. So this is the name of the project, I believe, and I'm going to call this testing rc2.site. Now, the reason I'm calling it dot .site is just for the namespace. I want the namespace of my website um, project to be dot .site. Um, I saw that Kevin Jump did that on his packages. Dot .site is quite good. Rather than using dot .web, sometimes people have um, libraries that end with dot .web, even though they're not an actual site. So enough about that. Let's press Enter. What this is going to do is going to create, using the template, it's going to create an Umbraco uh, website project using that. Then the next thing what we need to do is actually go into the folder. Now you can do CD and then like that. So if you're using the command line, you can do DIR from where you are, and it will say that you've got a folder here called testingrc2.site. I'm going to mark it and then copy it, and then I'll do CD and then paste that in. Another tip for you with the command line is you could do, if you could, if you want to go back, cd dot dot, and then you can do cd, and you can start typing it, 
and then put a star at the end. Because there's nothing else that matches that, it'll go into it. <clears throat> so it's like a wild card. Anyway, so we're into that folder. And now from here, what we can do is .NET build. So this is a bit like in Visual Studio where you do the build. Um, at the moment, I'm not using Visual Studio. And then we can do .NET run. So it's done the build, build succeeded. You can see that with the green text. I've just realized that this might be quite small. So what I might do is just change the properties. Let me just increase the font. I do apologize if you've been struggling. Hopefully this is better for you. I hate it when people do that. Anyway, what we can see here is now listening on this. So this is a little bit similar to if you've worked with uh, Node before. Um, to me, it reminds me of working with Node and that it runs the site for you on, on a port, a bit like you do with IIS Express. And what I want to do now is go in here, press Enter. It's going to complain that the certificate's not valid, but that's OK. I just do Advanced and then Proceed. And you can see things are getting logged out to this command line. Umbraco must install or upgrade. So if we put in, I always like to do this as my, when I'm testing things out like this. So I'll do my name and email as admin at admin.com and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh. I do that with all of these like open source or just testing out things. So I never get confused then. So because we chose uh, what I did when I when I did my .NET new on Braco, I didn't put the flag in to use SQL CE. Now, if you did want to use SQL CE, you might want to start again and use it. But at the moment, the only choices you have are these here. Um, but I'm going to use SQL Server. So I'm just going to create a new database. And I'm just going to call it testing RC2. I'm going to copy that name. And I'm going to create a login. We call it testing RC2 as well, just for ease, really. This is just like a throwaway project at the moment. And I've put I've chosen SQL Server authentication. Now, you might find that you don't have the option for that. You might just only have Windows. And that will be if you close this and come out and do properties on on your server node, you just need to do security and allow SQL Server and Windows authentication mode. You might be on this. So that trips people up when using SQL Server. <clears throat> so if I go back, do my login again. I'm choosing SQL Server authentication, put my password in. I'm unticking enforced reference, uh, enforced password policy and referential uh, and password expiration, etc. Then I'm doing user mapping and I just want to tick testing RC2 and then owner and then OK. So now that login will be able to log into that database. So all I need to do on this screen here is just do. Um, I need to put in the server. So if I copy that, if I inspect this, and then I paste that in there, then I can just do testing RC2 in the database name, and then I've got my username and my password. And I'm not using authentic integrated authentication, just click on continue. And what this is going to do is it's going to install a clean version of Umbraco. There's no starter kit that gets installed from this way of doing the install anymore. If we want the starter kit, we have to add it in afterwards. So that is Umbraco installed now, Umbraco 9. And if you click around, you'll find that it's rather quick compared to V8. You, you might 
notice or you may not notice yet but it's a it feels a lot quicker to me <clears throat> what i want to do now is just install the default starter kit i was going to do it as a separate video but hey i may as well just do it now so to stop this site i go back into the command prompt and i just do control c or i press escape first and then control c and that shuts down that site for me and that will allow me then to do other things so now that i've done that i want to do dot net add package and the package i want to add is on braco dot the starter kit press enter oh no it hasn't added it it said there's an error no stable versions so what i need to do is include the flag of pre-release so I do that again and then just do dash dash pre release. Now it's installing it. Then after this, what we have to do is .NET build. <clears throat> So that build has succeeded. Um, it's added the NuGet package for me. And so I can now run the site. So I'll do .NET run. What it should do when it runs a site, it should run it on the same port that it ran at the previous time. So if I still have that window open, I can still use that for, for so it'll be coming on this port 44373. And let's just have a look what it's doing here. So it's it's logging here that it's adding all of these pages. So is it, oh, there seem to be some errors in there. Notifications cannot be sent. Oh, maybe that's because there's a setting not done. But <clears throat> here we can see that all these nodes are being created. And then this is what we're looking for now listening on this. So that's the same port number. So we can go into here. And if we just reload the Umbraco, we should find that we have in the content tree, we'll have our starter kit. So this is all installed now. And we can click through and view the site. So that's how you install Umbraco 9 to get it to give you the um, starter kit and then in this video i may as well do a little bit more for you and that is setting up models builder um to work from a separate project so currently on this site it's using models builder <clears throat> and the models i'm not sure what exactly where they are oh actually it's probably because of the models mode let's go and have a look at what models mode it's using so what we can do is we can go into our testing RC2 site. I've got Visual Studio Code installed. So I'm going to open this as a VS Code project. Trust all the authors, I always do that. Right, app settings. So in here, we have got, has it got models builder settings? So it doesn't have any models builder settings. So I wonder what it thinks about this. So let's go to settings here, models builder. The models mode is in memory auto. Strongly typed models are regenerated. So this is saying, and I think this might be happening. Um, this may be happening by default. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that as we don't have models builder mode defined in here, it looks like it could perhaps be um set by default to be in memory auto so what we want to do is and what, and what people do quite often is they want to have their models and they want to be able to use intellisense for those models so in this next part of the video what we're going to do is we're going to create another project testing rc2.core and we'll have the models get built into that so in here after we've created another project so 
I'm going to close this VS Code folder and I'm going to go into testing RC2 site. I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to open with and then Visual Studio. Now you might want to do it differently if you've not got Visual Studio, if you're working on Linux or something. Uh, that, that's up to you. I'm not sure exactly how you do it. I just know how I do it on Windows. So I'm opening this project in, in here. And then what I want to do when it's opened, I want to add a new project. So it looks like it's loaded up now. So if we click on the solution and do add, and then new project, what we can do is so we've got recent project templates. We could actually search for a template. We could search for Umbraco just so um, from what we spoke about. So we do have the Umbraco project that we can install. That was from what we did earlier where we ran that command line to install the templates. So I said that some people might want to create that site one using Visual Studio, and that's how you do it like this. And anyway, we're not we're not searching for that at the moment. We just want to do a class library, and this one is a standard .NET standard or .NET Core target. So we click on Next, and I'm going to call this Testing RC Two dot Core, and where I want to put it is in that folder there. Next is .NET, uh, .NET 5 that I want to use, create. So when it creates this, it's going to create a, a basic class. Um, but before it does, it wants to save the solution. So I'm going to save the solution. Um, I want it to be outside of the site project. So I want it to be here. And actually, I want it to just be called testing rc2 dot sln so i'll save that there and now this is the class that it's created with that project so i'm just going to delete this class and another thing i want to do is just add a reference a project reference i've right clicked on the site um, site project and I'm adding a project reference and that is ticking from projects and then ticking the core project even though there's nothing in there yet I just want it to use the core one um, and before we do any more what I want the core one to have is I want it to have the umbraco cms dot web um, nuget package so if we go to manage NuGet packages for this, and we just search for umbraco.cms.web.website, and it's this one that I want to install. So if I click on browse, then it will come up. And I want to install that into my core one, because when I do generate my models, it's going to need to know about this. So I'm going to install that. And the version that I want it to use is 9RC2. Click on install. And OK. Now you probably could have added this uh, using the other way as well, using the command line with .NET add package. And now also is saying that Bergmania depends on this, and it's not quite found it. Well, that's fair enough. That's on the site project. It's just a warning. Uh, I think this will be sorted out when we're not in release candidate. And then the other thing that we need to do is actually install that Bergmania because there there are some open street maps uh, settings in the project in the starter kit that we're installing. So Bergmania open street map. We just want to install that version one. into the core project so that we're ready ahead of time so that when we do generate the models it will actually have all the references that it needs and what we can have a look as well is um, 
if we go back to the folder and we go to the project and we just open this in Visual Studio Code. We can just see what projects. Um, actually, I think that needs to be saved. Yeah, so we'll save that project and that should then reload in here. So now it's got the package references. One is for Racco CMS dot web dot website and the other one is bergmania open street map so it's a lot sim more simplified the uh, cs project file is when you're working with dotnet 5. right so now that we have um done that we want to edit the app settings so we can do uh, because we've opened visual studio let's do it from within visual studio so in dotnet core and .NET 5, we have these app settings and you can have a development one as well. So that's how you have them on different environments. We can look at that a bit more into that later on, or you can have a look on Pluralsight or anything about .NET Core or .NET 5 websites and learn a bit more about this. But what we're going to do here is we're going to edit the app settings.json file and under Umbraco and CMS, if you see where this one ends, CMS. So what we want to do is we want to add another setting here. And we want to, in quotes, we want to put call it models builder. Now we've got IntelliSense here, which is coming up and telling us what our options are. So that's great. So we can just select that one and press tab. So in models builder, I've got some settings that I want to do. So it should tell you what, what sort of uh, settings you can have so models mode and it even tells you what the options are so i want to choose source code auto so this means that it will generate the files and it will do it automatically as well when you save the document types rather than you having to go to settings and then go to the models builder tab and press generate models and the other thing i'm going to do as well is accept unsafe models directory meaning that i want to put these into another project outside of the web project and i want to set that to true so i don't want speech marks for that and then models directory i'm going to tell it where to put these so i need to do use tilde and then slash and then dot dot and then slash and then i'm going to call it and then it's the core project so testing rc2.core and then i want it to be in a models folder on that project so this bit here is just getting me out of the current project up a level and then into the core project like that and then what we want to do after this is i want to change the model's namespace now you could leave the model's namespace as it is and there's debate whether you should or shouldn't change the model's namespace um but it's good to be aware of how to change it so model's namespace and when i talk about the model's namespace um at the moment the model's namespace if we go into say home it's umbraco cms.web dot com and dot publish models that's the models namespace and what i want to do is change that and so if i go back into my app settings file so i want it to be the models namespace i want it to be is testing rc2 dot core dot models that's the namespace that I want to use. But again, you can leave this. You don't have to change the namespace. So with that done, um, what we can do then is build the solution. We might get some errors. Let's see if we do or not. It might have some problems because it's already running in here. So we may need to cancel this. So yeah, I think it's because it's already um, running. So if you find that you're trying to use Visual Studio, but 
IS Express has already got a hold on it. So I usually just press Escape and then Control C, and that stops the site. And you could then, it might be simpler and easier just to do .NET build from in here. And then do .NET run. And then what this will do is this will give us the URL again, but it should be the same URL. But once it's given you the URL, then you know that it's ready. So if we reload this, we have got it set to in um, we have got it set to source code auto. So by rights, it should automatically have generated the models. And this is good to look at. So on the models builder tab. It's saying the models mode is source code auto. So it picked up those settings from app settings, Jason. Um, it's saying that the models namespace is this. So if we were to create any more new views, it would automatically use that namespace. And tracking of item date is enabled. Do we need to generate them? I don't think we do. Let's go over to here and reload the project or actually I'll just need to show all files. It looks like there's a models folder, but it doesn't look like there's anything in there. So what we can do is generate models, and then we can see that they've actually been generated. So the models are here now. And if we have a look inside one of them, it's got the namespace testing rc2.core.models. So that's done what we wanted to do. Then there's a couple more things to do as well. So because we've already installed a starter kit and the starter kit has already got the namespace here of this, and we chose to change the namespace, what we need to do is just do an update. So I'm going to do control H and I'm going to do control H on this and replace it with um, So I'm doing a find and replace, and instead of umbraco.cms.web.com and .publish models, I'm just going to have testing rc2.core.models. So that's in the current project, and that's my using content model. So I'm going to replace all. There we go. And also, I'm just going to where it doesn't say using content models equals, where it's just at using like that and just taking off that content models part and re um, do that as well. So that should up have updated all of the views everywhere so that they know about where this is and what it's actually done as well on the view imports. Here it was the Umbraco CMS published content, and it's actually updated it to be that. So now we should find that the site still runs. Um, well, because we all we did there was just uh, change some views. If we go into content, we shouldn't need to do a rebuild. If we go into content and click on the home node. Oh, it looks like there's a bit of an error popped up there. Compilation problem home are you missing a reference looks like we might need to do a build so if we just stop the site so escape and control c and do dot net build And dot net run. This should um, iron out any more issues now because we've done a build now that we have the models generated. So fingers crossed, this should be enough. So if I try and reload the page now, and if if it doesn't, then we'll have to try and work out what the issue is. And it's worked. It's loaded the home page. 
So let's just have a quick look around just to make sure that all the pages are loading okay. It looks like they are. So this is using Models Builder on the new starter kit for Umbraco 9. Um, with your custom Models Builder namespace in your custom Models Builder folder. And yeah, hopefully that's helped you out if you if you weren't sure on how to get started. And, and I think that's where I'll leave it in terms of what I'm going to show you today. But that's how we've got custom models with custom namespace in a separate project. And also the benefit of doing that when you're in Visual Studio and you maybe want to use one of your properties. If we say we're on the blog, we might want to just add model and then we get to use the properties from that because we get to use the, um, what's the word, IntelliSense. So yeah, um, and maybe there's some settings on the home one that we can use. So you see how we've got model hero header and things like that. You can just do model dot, there we go. So we've got the IntelliSense on our properties now uh, because we're using it, the source code, um, source code auto mode. You can do source code manual as well if you want to, if you want to use that generate models button. So I think I'll leave that there. That's how we can. So we've got set up with Umbraco 9. We've actually installed it. I've shown you how you do it with SQL or SQL CE. You just add that extra flag. We've um, installed the starter kit, the Umbraco one. And we've also changed the models builder mode and we've put it in a separate project. So I hope you find this video useful and I hope you do get into trying out Umbraco 9, test it out, give feedback, try and find any bugs, try and do your normal um, workflow that you do with Umbraco and see if it, if it works and if there are any issues from what you would normally do because I think the more people that test it before it gets released publicly, the better. I um, hope you like the video. If you do, um, and you'd like to buy me a coffee, there's no obligation, but if you did want to, some people ask how can they, and you just go to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee, and then it's up to you. But again, there's no obligation to. Um, and yeah, please like the video if you do, subscribe and share with others as well, and look out for more videos um, on Umbraco 9. I might do more videos about Umbraco 9, different things that I learned along the way, or I might, do like a whole series on how to build a site again in Umbraco 9. All right, let me know in comments as well what you think about Umbraco 9 or if you're struggling. And if you are struggling, don't forget that there is a forum as well, ourumbraco.com. There's a forum there. And also there is a Facebook group as well. If you have uh, Facebook Umbraco web developers, you can join that group. Uh, I don't know if it will come up on here, but yeah, on Braco Web Developers, this should be the one. There's a Facebook group you can join. You can get help about that. And then the other place you can go is on Brackians. Dot chat, and that's that. You can put your email address in that, and you'll invite yourself to the on Braco Community Slack channel where people can help you on there as well. Right, I'm going to go. I've been waffling on for ages now. So I hope you liked the video. Take care. See you later. Bye.